If creating a design from scratch in Canva makes you a little bit nervous, if facing a blank page makes you a bit uncomfortable because you don't know where to start, well, my friend, you've clicked on the right video. In this tutorial, I will explain seven design principles that you can follow the next time you design in Canva so you can create with more confidence. Hi everybody, my name is Ronnie. First of all, welcome to our channel. If this is your first time here, make sure to subscribe as we publish new videos every weekday. Courses, webinars, tutorials, we've got everything you need right here on this channel for you to become a better designer. So hit that subscribe button. Now, we realize a lot of you guys do not come from a design background. Also, you might not be familiar with everything you can do with Canva. And that's okay, we are here to help. In this video, I will do my best to break down seven key design principles that should boost your confidence whenever you start a design in Canva, especially when you design from scratch, aka not using a template. So if you're ready, let's jump right into it. The first principle is to be clear on what you want to emphasize. Emphasis is when one element stands out in your design. And there are lots of ways we can emphasize something. If we take this Instagram story, for example, we can make this middle text box stand out by making it bigger, bolder, or brighter than everything around it. We use emphasis to drive people's attention to the parts of our design we want them to notice first. It could be a call to action, if you're creating a social media post or a date and time, if you're creating a flyer to invite people to your event. Let's have a look at this flyer. I want people to quickly understand when the event is taking place. So what I will do is I will emphasize the date by changing the color of the text. What I really did here is to create contrast with the rest of my design so that the date kind of jumps at you when you look at it. That's emphasis. And that's the first design principle I would like you to remember. When you start a design in Canva, ask yourself, what is the most important piece of information I want to communicate here. Understanding what needs to be emphasized is the first and most important step. Now, let's have a look at different techniques to create emphasis. And this leads me to design principle number two. Use contrast to make things pop. At its most basic level, contrast is difference. It's the difference between dark and light, big and small, thick and thin, or patterned and plain. An easy way to create contrast in your design is to use opposite elements or opposite attributes. These opposites will clash with one another, generating focal points in your design. They will make your design more interesting and help you create emphasis on certain elements. Now, let's look at a few different ways to create contrast in your design. Number one is to create contrast with colors. For example, if your design has a dark background, use bright or light colors for the elements you want people to focus on. People will naturally be attracted by the brightest color on the page, so use that to create a focal point. Another technique you can try to create contrast with colors is to use bright text boxes over black and white photos. Number two is to create contrast with size. We also call this technique hierarchy. The rule is simple. The biggest element on your design is what will get noticed first. So you want to make the most important element bigger than the rest. And this applies to text, but also your layout or shapes that you might be using in your design. Number three is to create contrast with shapes. If your design uses a lot of the same shape, you can create contrast by breaking the pattern and using a completely different shape. By introducing a rounded shape, for example, in a design with a lot of squares, rectangles, and hard edges, you can create that focal point. And the fourth way you can create contrast is with textures. Here, we are combining textured background with plain shapes to create contrast and attract the viewer's attention. You can, of course, also create contrast when working with typography. Combining small fonts with larger ones, bold fonts with thinner ones, or bold fonts with handwritten ones. So, as you can see, the same principle applies with typography. By adding contrast between different fonts we use, we create emphasis on certain words. If you are into this, I really encourage you to explore the text tab in the Canva editor to find more preset font combinations. 
Here, our Canva designers have made the hard work of finding fonts that combine well together to help you out. All right, moving on to principle number three. Don't be afraid of white space. We call white space any area of your design that is not taken up by other elements. But don't get fooled by the name. You can have white space even though your background is dark or blue or yellow, or even if it's a photo. In graphic design, we use white space to create emphasis, but also to group relevant elements together or to improve legibility. And the problem is that white space is often misunderstood by beginner designers. They feel like they are wasting good design real estate if they're not filling up the space that is available with more design elements. They think, look, there's still plenty of space in that design, let's add more stuff. <laughs> Not adding enough white space will result in having a design that is cluttered and confuses the viewer. They will not know what to focus on or where to look first. So what you want to do instead is to create empty areas that give your design some space to breathe. Now let's see how to utilize white space in the following example. White space makes our designs easier to look at. The creator of this particular design right here created emphasis on the text by leaving a bunch of white space in the upper part of the poster. And this helped draw our attention to the text at the bottom. Also, observe how playing with different text sizes and colors created hierarchy and influenced the order in which you read the message. All right, let's move on to the next design principle. We are at number four, and that is drive the eyes with movement. Movement is how our eyes scan the page when we discover a design for the first time. It's also how we go from one element to the next. You can use lines, size, shapes and colors to create movement in a still design. Like in this classic book cover, for example. The contrast created by the white text on the black background attracts our eyes to the title of the book, Jaw. Then we move down the page and we spot the shark lurking beneath. And only then do we come back to the smaller object, the swimmer, and maybe the text in red. This is a great illustration of how movement dictates where we look first, second, and third. Canva also makes it easy for us to use movement in a design, but this time in the more literal way. And I'm talking about creating actual movement with animated elements called stickers. Try searching for stickers when located on the Elements tab you will find a multitude of moving elements that will for sure grab the attention of viewers when placed in your design. Okay, we made it to principle number five, which is reinforce your ideas with repetition. Repeating an idea in your design is a great way to reinforce it. Repeating a pattern, a color, a shape, or a texture on your design can also help you create consistency, make the design look more uniform. And this is particularly true when creating longer documents like presentations, for example. One thing I like to do when creating slides for a presentation is to repeat certain colors, fonts, or even photo filters to create a sense of visual consistency across the entire presentation. Indeed, if you were to use different fonts and colors on every single slide of your presentation, it would feel quite uncomfortable to watch and also chaotic. My tip here is to use Canva's brand kit and create a specific color palette and a font hierarchy for every presentation you need to design. This will help you stay on brand and for sure reinforce the overall consistency of your slide deck. And if you want to learn more about brand kit and how to set it up, I will leave a card right here with a tutorial for you to watch later. Which leads me to design principle number six. Tell us what's important with proportion. Proportion in design refers to the size of elements in relation to each other. A larger object is more likely to draw the viewer's attention, making it more important. In this website example, the most important element is the tagline. So the designer made that text box the biggest element on the page, while the other elements are smaller. And of course, on top of giving us an indication of what's important in a design, Proportion also plays a role in ensuring coherence. For example, when creating a design that features a cup of tea, a spoon, and a book, the spoon should be smaller than the cup, and the book should be the largest elements of all three. To remain coherent and realistic, make sure you respect the proportions of each element and how these elements relate to each other. 
How are you all doing guys? I hope you find the content of this tutorial useful. And if you do, consider giving us a like. This will help us put this video in front of more people on YouTube. Also, if you like what you're seeing, subscribe to the channel because we have new videos every day of the week for you to learn how to become a better designer and how to use Canva. Now, back to the tutorial, let's wrap this up. Okay, you made it to the last design principle, which is number seven, create harmony by mastering balance. Balance is how you position objects inside your design. A good way to look at balance and understand how to use it is to remember that every element that you place on your page has a weight to it. That weight comes from its color, size or texture. Balance refers to how you distribute these elements on your page and the general feeling that arrangement creates in the design. It feels either balanced or imbalanced. Now, you can balance your elements symmetrically or asymmetrically. Symmetrical balance will give your design a sense of security. The viewer will feel safe knowing the design has been well structured and everything looks like it's in the right place. Now, while this type of balance might feel safe, it could also appear as a bit traditional or even boring in some cases. And then you have asymmetrical balance where elements are not balanced in exactly the same predictable way. For example, you might have on one side of your design a larger object on which we want to emphasize and that is balanced with less elements on the other side or smaller elements on the other side of your design. It's still balanced, but it's not mirrored or symmetrical like in the previous example. When executed well, asymmetrical balance will make your designs more dynamic and interesting. So there you go guys, seven design principles that if you follow, I guarantee will help you become a better designer. Now, for those of you who wish to dive a little bit deeper and maybe find some clients and start making money with Canva as a graphic designer, I have this other video right here that I encourage you to watch. In this video, I will teach you how to create a mood board to gather design inspiration and develop a vision for your next design project. I will see you there.